Hi everyone, in this lesson, we'll be learning how to show that the non-zero rows of an echelon matrix forms a linearly independent set. So in our last example, we, we come across an echelon matrix with zero rows. So for example, we came across with this example where we have a matrix of example integer A, B, C, D, this, this is the argument matrix that we came across, and then 0, 0, and the matrix of constant is 0, 0, 0. So this should be 0 because it's in echelon form. So this this should be 1 and 1 and b can be any integer whereby my b is any integer any real integer so the only diff here is that you have this zero rows so now the only diff in this video we will not have this zero rows at all so now we're going to prove again that even with non-zero rows we will form a linearly independent set so what's the first step we will think of a row echelon form of an augmented matrix consisting of the matrix of coefficient and a matrix of constant of zeros but this time with non-zero rows and then and just like our previous video we will again express the linear relationship among those vectors. So the vectors are S1 all the way to Sn. So if you have two vectors, you have S1 and S2. And if you have three vectors, is S1, S2, and S3. So this will depend on your vectors and if you have three vectors so you have c1 c2 and c3 so you use this equation and well we will re further reduce it to reduce row echelon form so that we can find the value of this and if we found our value to be this again you can see that there's a, the linear relationship is a trivial one and the subset is linearly independent and we can say that a linearly independent set is formed due to the non-zero rows of an echelon matrix. So let's start with step one first. So here we still are working here. So step one. Sorry, here. Step one. Let's think of an augmented matrix. Oh, I already think of one. One, zero, zero. Minus two, one, zero. One, minus one, one. The with now is with the matrix of constants of zero, so it's zero, zero, zero. So now, as you can see, we have three columns here. So this, so now we have three columns.
therefore you have three column vectors So therefore you will have vector 1, we don't know what's our value, vector 2, we will don't know what's our value, and also vector 3. So three vectors here, and now let's further reduce it to reduce row echelon form. So this is row 1. row 2, row 3. Let's start with column 3. So you want to eliminate the entries above 1 in the third column. So what do we do first? We add 1 times of row 3 to row 2 to eliminate the entry in the second row in the column 3 of row 2 and column 3 and here also sorry about that you want to eliminate the entry in the first row in the third column so we minus 1 times of row 3 plus row 1 so now we will not bother our first our last row 0 1 0 so now for this one minus minus also is first one so for this Third row plus second row is 1 minus 1 equals to 0. 0 plus 1 equals to 1. 0 plus 0 equals to 0. Now for my constant, matrix of constant, 0 plus 0 will give me 0. And now for my between third and sec first row, minus 1 plus 1 will give me 0. Minus 0 plus minus 2 is minus 2 minus 0 minus 1 times 0 equals to 0 0 plus 1 equals to 0 and now for this one the matrix of constant minus 1 times 0 equals to 0 0 plus 0 will give me 0 so now this so now still this is our first row second row Third row. So now our third column is settled. Now for this, it's not yet. So you want to eliminate the entry above one in the second column. So now what do we do? We add two times of row two to row 1 to eliminate this entry here so again we don't disturb the last row and the second row is also undisturbed and now for this Two times zero equals to zero. Zero plus zero equals to zero. And now for this, two times one equals to two. Two minus two equals to zero. And for this, two times zero equals to zero. Zero plus one equals to one. And for the constant or matrix, two times zero equals to zero. Zero plus zero equals to zero. So now we have got gotten into this form. It's already in reduced row echelon form. And hence. 
now from this is our new first row new second row our new third row so now hence we have three matrices so we must we can find the value of c1 c2 and c3 so step 3 step 3 is done and therefore hence now step 4 we find the values so we can see that c1 equals to 0 from here c2 equals to 0 C3 equals to 0. So this is step 4 where we can do our conclusion. So from here, we can say that there's a the linear relationship between these columns or the vectors is a trivial one and we can say that it is linearly independent and therefore, we can say that a linearly independent set is formed. So we have now come to the end of this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a comment and I'll get back to your comment as soon as possible. Thanks so much for watching and have a nice day.